Hello, how are you? Uh, another day, here we are. on this I know, morning. it's a Monday. I feel like a businesswoman today. Monday, yeah. Monday. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, I'm sitting here and I'm just like, oh, God, it's Monday. How did this happen? How did this happen? I mean, just how did this happen? Whoa. Let me know it. Yes. So I'm making sure so everybody knows that mm -hmm. I am logging into uh, Facebook through here. StreamYard is currently having an issue with um, Facebook where normally we could see the comments in our thread and they're currently not seeing comments in the thread on StreamYard. Mm -hmm. So I actually have to pay attention. So good luck to everybody that's joining about me actually paying attention. But I do have it open so that I can see these comments. Uh, so we're doing the same over here on my side. There we go, see, see, so. Illusions. It, it is an illusion, it's a complete illusion. It is the sass of the science of the sciences of the sasses. <laughs> so true. Um, Beyonce says you look so, or Michelle says Beyonce looks so good. Um, Ethan says, I'm loving the glasses. So just an FYI, the reason why I have glasses on is I actually hit my water line um, an hour ago and my eye keeps running. So that's my secret. I'm very so glad. People who I don't know the medical term for water line, that's yeah. when your pipe bursts and water <laughs> out. I, I'm currently flooding my basement. I'm currently, flo well, I'm flooding my face. I'm flooding my face. Well, your face can be your basement sometimes, but that's a different topic. Oh, girl, I forgot to stir this. Mama's having a little pick-me-up, and she forgot to stir her her screwdriver in her fantastic cup. It's a coffee cup, because Mama needs a little pick-me-up, you know? It's a, it is a Monday. So let's see, who do we have in here so far? Hi, Mark. Um, we have Brad, we have Mark, we have Michelle, we have Ethan, we have Thomas, we have... Um, Darnell Bradley, hello everybody. How are you guys doing today? I know that it's a Monday. It is at 7 p.m. It's a change of time, a change of day, everything like that. But we had to do that. Why? Because of me. <laughs> Just to let you know. So let's talk about that for a brief moment. So everyone is talking about when are we going back to work? What's phase one? What's phase two? Right, what right, right. Mean? Um, I'm a little scared, to be honest. So listen, I'm a little scared, but you want to know why? I'm more scared that they're going to come and foreclose on my house. Well, so yeah. True. I'll take COVID over the foreclosure anytime, any day. Mama got to turn on her little light over here. She forgot to do that. <laughs> so the reason why I'm scared is because, so phase one, we're talking about 25% of restaurants and retail stores, right? Uh -huh. So who is the one measuring... Who's the one like TikTok, you must, 25%. No, 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 this lady needs to stay outside, but the gentleman can go in and like, who decides this? Who's observing or watching this? Businesses are businesses. We're capitalism for a reason, you know? Right, so here's the thing, here's the thing. So here's the thing about it though. So let's break this down. So say you have a hundred square foot restaurant, right? And you can only see 25% of them. So you're going to close off 75% of the restaurant. And then you're going to put 25% of the people in that area in six foot designated areas. Well, no, well, yeah, I was going to say, we still have to maintain social distancing. So one table across from another table, six feet. Um, right. But we're, again, I go back, this is capitalism. We, this is the kind of country we live in. So at the end of the day, the almighty dollar might just... Okay, so all my dollar will make me do a lot of things. Listen, I'm about to. I remember, the 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 shirt, the the remember that. Remember the shirt that said, "Oh well, I'm not gay, but a twenty is a 20? Uh, yes, actually, my friend Anthony Joseph, that's in the room. He is a he's a unicorn. He's a straight, fantastic man. Um, he actually has a shirt like that. And I said, "Bitch, I'll pay you fifty. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, don't keep yourself." Up. <laughs> so I don't have a spoon. So I gotta stir my um my screwdriver with my finger. Now, unicorn, when you say unicorn, do you mean hetero flexible? No, he's not flexible whatsoever. Dan and I try all the time. His um, wife is actually like a little sister to me. And when she was oh. pregnant, and after she gave birth to the child, I said, listen, I said, I know that you guys can have sex for like six weeks. So we're 20 minutes down the road, girl. Well, boo. 
So Brad right. Allen confirms our thoughts. Holla for the dollar. Holla for the dollar. Let's give a couple shout outs to a couple more people. We have Horace Adonis has entered. Hello, Horace Adonis. He is one of our sponsors today uh, for the giveaway of the prizes. Remember, everybody, we will be having uh, three prizes throughout the um, show today. Uh, we are doing a fan sponsored by fatmarkerclothing.com. We are doing a mask sponsored by Horace Adonis. And if whoever the first person, because this is about crew health, whoever the first person that is to message me DM privately, because I know talking about our statuses is sometimes a little like, eh, we don't want to say if we're positive, negative, sexually active, not sexually active, open, closed, poly, non-poly, whatever. So whoever messages me privately, and this is going to be the second question um, when we do the uh, little quiz, you DM me privately, so slide into Baronce's DMs, and Ooh. I will get your information, and Eric will contact you to get you on prep. Okay? Yes. So, Anyone who wants prep, we're going to make this happen. We're going to make this happen. Amazing. We're going to make this happen. So we have Jonathan Barnes in the house. Hello, Daddy. How are you? We have Ben Glenn. Hello. T uh, Ken Terrell is in the house. Well, he might see himself a little in a few. What happened? We're gonna talk about him, so. We're gonna talk about him. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna talk about something really quick. That smile and that picture you guys sent me, bitch, bitch, that smile is everything. Wait till y'all see this. Wait till y'all see the Mr. Ken's smile. I am just gonna say right now, that bitch got a smile for everybody, for days, for love, for hate. You can tell that he just absolutely loves life, or at least he can, is a really good actor and he's good kind of it. Thank oh. you, make it. Was that was that your microwave going off? Is that your popcorn ready? I didn't oh no, Eartha is the one. Eartha Quake made the popcorn last time. Oh, that's right. She did make the so yeah. So if you all of a sudden see something black run down my cheek, um, my eyes still watering. So she I is watering. emotionally overcome by how lovely it is that all you people have joined us. Exactly, exactly. We have Julius Vaughn. He is one of the owners of Fat Marker Clothing. We have uh, Eleanor Diamond. Hi. We have Jonathan Barry. Hello, love. So, what is today's subject? Today's subject is who, what, and where is crew health? This is extremely important because everybody knows who uh, Barante Bear is. Everybody knows who Eric is. Everybody knows who Ethan is. Everybody knows who your entire team is. But And I, I know a lot of people know who Crew Health is, but I want to dive into those ones that don't know. And we're going to discuss about that. So the first things first is we are going to come in and we're going to say, who is Crew Health? Let's introduce you to them, okay? First off, the fantastic, gorgeous, handsome that you see with me on this screen is right here. Oh, God. This is Eric Suarez. He is an APRN FNP BC AAHIV M Chief Medical Officer. Basically, he's the motherfucker in charge, honey. Okay. He's the advanced practice, practice registered nurse, board certified family practice, American Academy of HIV Medication, and from Harvard University certified in trans care. And, you know, I think that that is extremely important. So, Eric, I mean... Do you know the one thing, and this is going to so, be so, so petty, and I'm sure everyone will relate. So, you know, when you look at your... This photo is actually... God. It's from November. From November. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, this photo is from November. From November to now, I, when I took that photo, I was 308 pounds. Today, I'm 285 and I could see, like, the, I can actually fit into that lab coat well today. I couldn't then. You see it's you know screaming. Thanks. Now I'm just going to take it from the bottle because uh, when I took those photos in November, I was 280, and now I'm 308. Oh, my God. That's corona weight. That's what that is. <laughs> Uh, the hi, Rob, hi, Bridget Wesley. Hi, Rob Nicolay. Hello, Shishi LaRue. Hello, Ooh. Michael Morris. So, Eric, tell us about you. So give us a little give us a little tea about there. Oh, man. So, like Beyonce said in the beginning, I'm one pubic care from being a doctor. I am, have no interest in finish, um, going to school to become a doctor. I'm a nurse practitioner. That's And for people who don't know, um, nurse practitioners are the most advanced practice that a nurse can have. 
right? Oftentimes they're the ones. So the funny thing is, is that when we watch Grey's Anatomy, right? One of the things where all nurse practitioners laugh about, and even sometimes nurses, they're like, uh, doctors don't do that. Right, right, right. Like, we are the ones that do that. Well, and you know, that's why I think it's funny. It's like nurse practitioners, what I have learned, because I have been around the medical industry like a majority of my of my adulthood. My ex is a speech, uh, speech pathologist, and I went ahead and I, you know, I've, I've engulfed myself with that. Being a hairdresser, I'm around it a lot and stuff like that too. Is y'all nurse practitioners know more than doctors? I, I don't think that that's completely You're up true. to current. You're up to current. I'm going to say that. You can't say it, but I sure as hell can say it. Y'all are current. Because I see some doctors that practice, and I'm like, you want I think it's different way? in that we definitely come from a real world. We were at the bedside as nurses. We've kind of climbed the ladder along the way. It, exactly. it, it's different. It definitely is different. Yes, it is. It... it, it and I think you guys have more compassion. Well, I think that goes with nursing in general. Look at the situation we're in right now. That's true. I Crew Health still goes to work every single day. Um, we see patients virtually from everywhere. My last patient of the day actually happened to be from Miami, um, near Core Gables area. So it's just because there's a lot of organizations that are closed right, uh, or won't pick up their phone or will tell you that they'll call you back in two days but won't. Or tell you that they have an answering service and then they really don't. It's just an answering machine. I've that, heard that some uh, have hotlines, but in reality, they don't. Yeah, I, I know I know you guys have some sort of, uh, you have the after hours number listed. Yeah, absolutely. And we answer the phone. That comes to me. Yeah. <laughs> so if you wake me up in the middle of the night and you're like, oh my God, I'm dying. I'm going to be like, oh girl, what do you want on a casket? Click. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That doesn't get your 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 line never comes to me. Never, ever, 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 ever. Oh my god, that would be interesting if I pass you the on call phone. <laughs> if people actually call. Can you imagine somebody calling at three o'clock in the morning and I'm like, like what? This is Bear on saying. Hello. My smoker. Hello. That would be too that actually happened to me one time, so years ago, a friend of mine called me at three o'clock in the morning and I literally answered the phone. I said, who died? And she called me to tell me, I, we're, we're, I'm not going to say we're not friends anymore. We just haven't spoken in years. So I'm sure mm -hmm. at some point there is a love, but she told me that she slept with her aunt's husband. <gasps> oh, so uncle by marriage. Yeah, I understand. But still like, what is your Thanksgiving going to look like? But at three o'clock in the morning, you gotta call me and tell me this. That's probably because I said to her, you did, was it good? did you enjoy it? And she said, yes. I said, good, then call me tomorrow and give me the details. Yeah, she finished. She was <laughs> overwhelmed with guilt, didn't know who to reach out to and reach out to you. Exactly. So we have Gordon Bandy in the house. He says, long time since Austin, wink, wink. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. Gordon Bandy, do Ooh. you know what? I haven't been to Austin, Texas. I would love to visit sometime. I've never been to Austin, Texas. So, um, Gordon, Ryan, Ryan, Brown, Ryan Brown is in the house. Tony Kakuzi. She's Hi, Ryan Brown. Hands Free Tony is here. Yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, so basically, so basically, you guys are the highest part of nursing, but there's something that I think is important that you really need to, to to talk about is, I mean, we all know what prep is. We all know who prep is, but let's just have like, just like a recap of it in the sense of you are the number one provider in central Florida, correct? Central and Northern Florida. We provide more prep. Central and Northern Florida. So you are the number one provider. And I do know that if you look up HIV prevention, Orlando, Florida, you are the first um, website that jumps on. I think we might be even the first two websites or two. Um, yeah, she's got to claim the first and the second spot, bitch. Yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, so prep is changing the HIV conversion. Yeah. So this is, I mean, I think we like beat prep like a dead horse. Um, there's a reason for it, and it's actually this is what's going to change our world in a big way. Uh, basically, it's, I, you know, the funny thing is, is I've had long conversations with some of the doctors, like special infectious disease doctors in our right. area from other organizations, like other organizations that we work with. And 
we talk about vaccines, especially now with COVID, how everyone's looking for a vaccine. Mm -hmm. um, vaccines don't come around. They're hard to make. They're not easy to make at all. Mm -hmm. So there, and there's a lot of testing and a lot of um, verification that's involved to make sure that they're effective. And even some of the vaccines that have been approved by the FDA. So just to give you an idea, the, um, uh, which one? The shingles vaccine. The shingles vaccine is- Is that herpes? No, no, it's really more closer related to chicken pox. Same family, but a little more distant cousin. Same family as herpes? Huh? Same family as herpes? It's similar. It's similar, but make, make more like second or third cousin, I would call it. John Parker, do you have shingles? Oh, he just has herpes. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so crazy. So sorry. <laughs> bitch, bitch. Listen, oh, man. Listen, I cannot wait till she moves out. July 1st is coming closer and closer. And until then, her life is going to be a Okay, everyone. Better. Everyone who's here right now. Kyle Schwann, uh, Ryan Brown, Gordon, Bandy, which owes me a reason why to go to Austin. I'm Please, at Austin. Lots of hearts if you want to see John Porker's herpes. <laughs> you, Lots of hearts. Let's see the cards if we want to see the herpes. Oh, oh my god, they're coming right through the kitchen. They really want to see her. People love her, Porco. I've seen, I've seen the kind of the scrubs, the apps, the, the apps, the daps, the baps. Oh, Lord. She, she, she moved to this area in here a year and a half ago-ish, and that place was all the cruising spots. I've lived in my house for 10 years, and I knew one. And I didn't even go there. But anyways, so, no, so, I, so okay, so prep converging. Um, so yeah, prep, I mean, 99.7% protection. Um, they're, like, to give you an idea, the shingles vaccine is 40% effective. So you have one vaccine that's 40, prep that protects you from HIV, like, in other words, a virus, similar right. virus, right, uh, or similar concept. Um, and it's at 90, uh, prep is 97.99.7 and shingles is 40. Nice. Yet, 40, yet that shingle vaccine is approved by the FDA for our general populace. So goes to show how vaccines are very hard to make very effective. Um, granted, they're a great tool and they're something that we will always continue to use. Right. You can definitely see the difference between the two. Oh, so, absolutely, absolutely. So that's why we beat up prep a lot is because I mean, ninety nine point seven. Those aren't those numbers are unheard of, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, I, I know. Well, we'll talk about that later because let's finish meeting the rest of your team, okay? Yes, let's talk. About then it. we have this sexy motherfucker, which let me say right now, if I was a single lady, hello, because he put a ring on it. So I'm not a single lady anymore. If I was a single lady, I would totally bat this on the side. But we're going to talk about Ethan oh. Torres. Look at that sexy mofo, honey. Yes. Hey, daddy. This is the chief executive officer of crewhealth.org. He is a certified emergency medical, medically trained technician. So he, but girl, just look. I, no wonder why he is your husband. I mean. I'll tell you right now, my man is the finest man on the, on the play face of the planet in my eyes, and I will say that your man is a good running next or second. Oh, Just no. Saying. Just saying. Hello, Dale Wilson. Power Infinity is in the house. Hello, honey. Hello, Felina Fritz. How are you guys Hi, doing? Kyle Schwinn. Matt, DJ Loverboy, how are you guys doing? Yes, on this glorious Monday at 7.20 p.m. So exactly what is the chief um, officer? Okay, so chief executive officer for, the, I mean, a lot of people say, oh, I want to be the CEO, I CEO. It is a horrible job in the sense that everything at the end of the day ends up on your desk. You are the sole person responsible for guiding a company and guiding everything kind of together and setting the pace and tone of things. Right. Um, that's, it's hard. It's a hard job because you've got to get all the ducks in a row every single time. And if not, it is your fault, 100%. Gotcha. Um, so, so it's not an easy job for it all, at all. It's not, I, I No, I couldn't imagine. So basically, the next person that I'm going to show is the Emily. This is the Emily to crewhealth.org. Basically, he has a fancy title, but in my book, he's just the Crew Health Emily. <laughs> this is <laughs> Emily. Oh, my God. We need to start calling her Emily. Patients manager or officer. He is a master's in business, HIV testing counselor with the HIV testing division of crewhealth.org. 
So we have the head bitch in charge. We got the head nurse in charge and Emily. God bless her because she's going to go after two people, but technically there's two other figures. And let me tell you, you got to be careful because she will run you over in a heartbeat. Girl, she is like Professor Xavier X realness all the way. Oh, oh my God. If anybody knows Chad, which I'm sure a lot of people do, you know, he um, he's, what is this correct? Candy capable, correct? Um, that is correct term, yeah. yeah. And bitch, I live for him because he he sports around in that uh, wheelchair and gets play like nobody's business. I love Chad. And I have sat on his lap and that's how I know that he can still move it because, like, literally, I sat on his lap oh and he was wheeling around. And I was like, I love that this drink. Hello, Pierre Luke. Hello, Pierre Luke. How are you up there, all the way up in Canada? Hello, darlings. So, yeah, so we have that. Then we have this fantastic, gorgeous, handsome man that I was talking about with that smile for days. Yes. Yes. And Terrell. He is the head of prevention, testing, and outreach events. Um, owner of Oak Central Florida, which is Older Adults with Knowledge nonprofit organization. I look at that smile. I mean, like that just tells me I want to come in. And the best part is he's often, so if you come in just for an STD test, a syphilis test, mm -hmm. there is nothing in the world you can't tell this man that he has not heard before, at least several times before. And I will tell you, he is the most comfortable person to have just have a chat, get your test done, pop in, pop out, know your status. Girl, listen, with that smile, I would want to put him on my will. Yeah, well. You know. I mean, if this COVID keeps going much longer, I'm not going to have a will, but, you know, I would want to put him on my will. <laughs> well, we'll hello, Daniel Logo. Hello, okay. Edward Scott uh, Grant Grinison. How are you? Um, so there, what I just realized in the in the slides though, where there's one missing person, which this bitch right here, honey. Oh yeah, yeah. this is the head bearded bitch in charge, mama. Seriously. Uh -huh. Oh my god, that is. <laughs> let me tell you, I love that piece right there. Right, right, right. Don't clown around with HIV, get on prep. Honestly, I'm not an employee or associated of, of employment by crewhealth.org. Well, you know what? Here's the thing. Know. Everyone contributes to making our community better in some way. And this is part of your contribution, though. Oh, that is my contribution. Because, you know, I from the, from the moment I met you, I was in love. Yeah. I was, and then and then I saw that your man was giving me looks, and I was like, I'm married. And then I saw he gave him my man. So I actually have a little secret that you don't know about. Oh. You technically do know about it, but you won't remember. Did we talk? Yes. Would you like to know what it is? I w wait. Yes. Scandal. Yeah. Scandal. Beyonce scandal. Hold on. I Beyonce scandal know. about to get released. Oh, bitch. she's not tough, so she can't stand up too high. So here it wait. is. But wait, let's give a bunch a bunch of hearts so people will come in. Oh, Ryan, yeah, Ryan, 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 Ryan Prince, Marcus Fletcher, hello everybody. Bunch of hearts. Listen, Eric's about to give some fucking scandal on Bear on say what is the beat tea? Because I don't have a lot of scandal out there. Honestly, like I'm a bitch that doesn't get involved in that bit. So, so it actually has to do with you and I. Are you interested more now? Oh, girl. So oh. check this out. When I was doing my bachelor's degree in Nova Southeastern in Fort Myers, oh. right, I would actually go on my growler and look at a people oh. in different parts of the state. You and I have flirted together. Ah! <laughs> this is like years and years, like almost a decade back. It is crazy. But yeah, we have flirted together before. Daniel, just, and look at this. Daniel just, Daniel just popped in. Dan just popped in. Dan just popped in. <laughs> Babe, this was before you, apparently. This was before you. It was almost a decade ago, Dan. Bitch, did we really? Yes. Wait, how do you know this? I mean, do you just remember it? or or? So what happened was, in one of the previous videos, the camera angled in such a way where I was like, wait, and then it's triggered a memory. And I was like, 
oh my God, that's who that person is. Shame. I know. Did we did we swatch deck picks? Did we swatch deck picks? No, I didn't get that far. No. What did we do you remember what we talked about? <laughs> um I think you were we were trying to set up a hookup. So we didn't hook up that. Well of course not. I was in Fort Myers and you were up here. Well, no, I was down in Fort Myers performing one time. Oh, you were? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. You uh -huh. would come at TBL when TBL was open. I can't believe that thing, TBL. Well, TBL. Does Girl. anyone know? Does anyone in our chat room know what TBL is from Fort Myers, Florida? Bottom line. The bottom line. Yeah. Bottom line, honey. That was a fantastic club. It was a beautiful club. I love it. Was huge, it. huge. It was huge. And the Warriors Club next door too. Yeah, and now, and now I think it's like a uh, you could get certified with trucks. You could get your CDL yeah. certification. Yeah. So Daniel Lago says, "Shocker." Oh, oh bitch. She done came for me, but she 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 just she's she's a bitch. Um, Edward Scott says, "Love how you acknowledge everyone by name makes us all feel special and truly welcome." Edward Edward Scott, I think that it is extremely important for people to acknowledge people by name because here's the thing: is we would not have this show if nobody came in. So you're taking the time yeah. out, even if it's for five minutes, you're taking your time out to to um, go and join our conversation. Yeah, to join our conversation. Sure. So, of course. Uh, Mark says, Porco. yes, this queen. John Porco entered, Joshua Steven, hello, 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 hello. Okay, so now that we have found out that Berante is a hoe back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, do you still have this message in your, in, your, in your app, like in your history? No, I think it may have deleted by this time. I could probably look back to see it. Go, go back and see if you can find it at some point. Yeah. We'll talk about that on the next show next Monday. Oh my god. If you god. can find it, we are so having a discussion about this chat because bitch, I don't I, I haven't been on the app for three years. Well, yeah, three years. So, Do you know, I just discovered this. If you're not on the app, like my app recently told me, um, Growler says, Oh, we miss you, haven't seen you in a little while. Come join our conversation. Does anyone has that happened to anyone else? I wonder. Girl, don't ask about that at this time because all these hoes are on there. You know that. No judgment, no shade, no tea. <laughs> <laughs> but every single one of you that is not um, in a close relationship, y'all are on the apps. I know it because I live with one girl. I'm like, bitch, you still got you got like 57 days and your room ain't even packed, mama. You might want to get a box or two right now and start get that shit going. I want to hear that tape going across, go, and then a fucking scissor goes snip. Oh my god. I wanna I wanna smell Sharpie in my house. I wanna smell from the label of the boxes. I wanna get high off of the amount of fumes of Sharpies. Well, here's, the, here's the another thing, Beyonce, that I don't think a lot of people don't know about is that okay, yeah, everyone talks about prep. But the girls know what morning after pill is, but do people know what NPEP is? So, what are, what so, we after prep, what are they so, so there's two types of prep, right? Like, isn't there like two medications? True. The, so Truvada is used for girls and Discovy is used for boys. So uh, now here's my question. Mm -hmm. Here's my question about this. Mm -hmm. So if true if true if Truvada is for female and Discovy is for male. What if you are trans in the sense of cellularly structured the body, if you have not had a hysterectomy or it, whatever, you know, how, do, how does that determination go? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I will identify you as you are, but how is that medication going to identify you? So the medication actually doesn't know the difference and doesn't care. Okay. Discovery actually works in girls, um, and just in fact, Discovery will in the future be used in girls. So this is the reason why Truvada is for girls and not and not Discovery, is that when Discovery was done, the studies were done. Um, the studies were done with uh, men and trans men or trans trans women. Okay. So people that were born as men who's transitioned to womanhood, okay. and a lot of these people in the studies even had neo vaginas. So they had. You know the whole gender reconstruct, uh, yeah, re gender reconstruction surgery. Okay. So they have full on new vaginas, right? That we call neo vaginas. So here's the catch: there, um, the FDA when they reviewed Discovy right as a medication, they said, "Oh, look in your study. Your study only has men and trans women in it. So we will only allow you to use it for these two people." 
So, and trust me, like if you go to any conference, the one thing that people are asking is when can we use the Scovy for women? Right. Because, and here's the catch. So Truvada, Truvada is a much harsher medication, right? Harsher. Well, let me tell you, when I was on it, my balls were so sore. I think that's psychosomatic. I don't know what sort it is. My balls were so sore when I was on Truvada. Like when I was single and I was taking the Truvada, my mm. nutsack felt like a grapefruit. And you try tucking, which I don't tuck, but I, I smush. Like I don't tuck, I just smush it. You have a modified tuck. I do. I have a, I, well, I'm fat, so I can just blend it into my fat rolls. There you but go. Still, when you pull all that lycra on, girl, I, I think it's a sore nut sack. Let me tell you. Oh Let me God. tell you. Hello, Sean Nuff. Hello, Randy Carden. How are you guys? How are you? Um, Daniel said, hi, sorry, I was wrist deep in raw chicken. He's making dinner. Ooh. So as you come in and we're talking about vaginas, he says he was wrist, wrist deep in chicken. There you go. I was wrist oh, deep in God. him, but we'll talk, that's another subject. Ah! ah. Well, puppetry, everyone. Puppetry. Exactly. 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 Hello, A. Martinez. How are you, handsome? How are you? So, okay. So, I'm not that I, I didn't get that wrong. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> 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 let's talk, let's go on to the next subject. Oh my god! So the the next subject actually might be my one of my faves is yeah, and pep. And so with and pep, okay. So and pep is a combination of Tivike with Truvada or Tivike and Discovi, right? Um, and this is the best part. Everyone knows the morning after pill, right? It, you have seventy two hours to take the. I mean, girls have seventy two hours to take the morning after pill to prevent pregnancy. So this is almost no different, except it has nothing to do with pregnancy and it has everything to do with HIV. <laughs> so let's say you had a whoopsie, rape, intimate sexual partner violence, these kind of things happen, unfortunately, in the world we live in. So check this out. There's actually, if, whether you have 72 hours to start NPEP. If started, you have 98%, I think it's 98.9 .9 or 98.8% success rate of uh, not getting HIV. Even within though you have been completely exposed. Within 72 hours. Within 72 hours. Bitch! It's a new day, a new dawn up in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Which is weird because this could be so valuable. And I will tell you, at Crew Health, every single person that we've ever treated with NPAP, a 100% of them have maintained HIV negative. That's amazing. That. And you want to know what I love about that is the fact that you guys offer that to people um, because I don't think, that, you know, I think a lot of people sit here sit and, you know, even though, even though statistically the numbers of HIV have gone down because of crap, but still, you know, it is out there and stuff does happen. Like you said, rape or, you know, anything. Shit. Listen, you I don't have, have a lapse in judgment. Have alcohol one night. I had know. a drunken. I had a drunken night one night at um, an establishment in Orlando, and I stayed at that night that at the thing that night and the room that night, and oh woke up the next morning. And the person I was with, I knew. Well, I had just met them, but the, they came with a friend of mine, and I slammed the hell out of him. This was when I was single again. Remember, she was single at one point in her life, and like. I woke up and I was like, uh, "Yeah." And here's an this is and we, he was like, "No." And I was like, um, "I literally just got my results set, my results yesterday, like literally the day before." You did or he did? I literally had just got my test results. Oh, uh, like, okay. I went out Friday night. Thursday, I got my test results. <laughs> okay, and I was like. I need to know right now, like anything. Do you have anything? And he was okay. like, no, I just got tested too. Bitch, I got chlamydia from him. Look, let's pray. Let's let's thank baby Jesus it was just chlamydia, okay? Go, go, go. So this is actually a very good topic. So look at your example, right? The example you gave us, you had an incident. It was a lapse of judgment, whatever. It happened. Um, oftentimes, people go running to get HIV tested. And here's the problem. When a person becomes um, infected with HIV, right, the, the antibodies will actually not show up until 14 days later. So if you had gone to go get tested, it would show that you were negative. Right, right. Well, and that's I, it. 
And you would be like, oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. It's great. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, exactly. So th so, here, so here's the story of a lovely lady. So like that happened in May. I met Dan in July mm -hmm. and I waited a full 30 days before I started, before I went and got tested because I knew about the whole, you know, you have to wait. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went ahead and when I met Dan, I was like, you know, we're just meeting and um, you go, Daniel, lubricate, read that bitch. You finally admit it. Oh, people are commenting here. Let's read a couple comments really quick. Let's read some comments because I see Baronte has a maxi vagina. <laughs> yes. Anthony has a, Baronte has, Anthony. <laughs> That's me. Baronte has, Jimmy Arnott says, hi, guys, you are amazing. Thank you so much, Jimmy. This is what we're here for. We're here just to divulge all kinds of information, everything from who Crew Health is based here in Orlando, Florida, that you can come and you can get all of your medical needs done, um, all the way to teleservices. And when you call them, you can find all the deets about that. We're going to go ahead and hop in. Uh, we have Sean Sanders in here. Hey, sis, how you doing? Hey, Martinez, love you too, boo. Um, Zach Beach, if you're still in here, hey sis, how you doing? Do you know who Zach is? No, I don't, but someone just mentioned Chlamydia Awareness Month. That is awesome. <laughs> Jeffrey Edwards, David Eddins, hello, hello, hello. David, what the hell was your drag name? I can't remember it. It was, well, John, what was that hot man? Oh, Anna Kapoor LaBeouf. Hey girl, how are you? Um, Jeffrey Edwards, hello, honey. I can't wait for your husband to start answering the phone saying hello, welcome to Grace Adler's uh, Flower Designs. John Porco, London Dumour from New Orleans. She's in a hizzy. Tom Bland, hello, Tom. Chlamydia Awareness Month, yes, Julius. Um, um, Anna yeah. Capri. Anna, Anna Capri LeBeau. Le okay. But, um, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure how that name was chosen. I don't know. The last three people he hooked up with? That <laughs> girl. Don't know. With a bunch of no. So no. let's go on to these two medications and what they're used for. Yes. Okay. So the one on the left, Devado, um, is actually the left side. Mm -hmm. So as you're viewing it, the one on the left side. So Devado is actually a revolutionary pill in a lot of ways. So um, treatment for HIV is nowadays we got down to a science. It's a one pill a day. Uh, Devado is great in the sense that it is probably the most effective while also being the least toxic as far as like you think longevity, I'm gonna be on this forever. So how do I control the virus, right? And make sure that I'm happy, healthy, protected, undetectable so I can't infect anyone. But at the same time, how do I minimize how much antiviral is in my body uh, for the rest of my life, right? Now, Big Tarvi is the other one. And let me tell you, I love, 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 love Big Tarvi. It's probably one of my most favorite go-to. Big Tarvi, the reason I love it is because someone will come to us in a moment of panic because they just became positive. And honestly, Big Tarvi probably gets most of our patients undetectable in probably like a month or two, two months the most, really. And I'm talking about like millions, hundreds of thousands to millions of copies of the virus. It's gone wild. And Victoria would be like, I got you under control. And that's how come people that are undetectable aren't able to spread the virus, correct? Yeah, there's not enough copies in them to even be detected by our modern equipment and machine. I so, love that. I absolutely love Like that. You know, I I know a lot of people that are HIV positive, and you know, the the stigma that what bitch, my eye is just steady sitting here running. All about talking about stigma. Here's the weird part: today you're more likely to get HIV from someone who thinks they're negative than from someone because we know you cannot get it from someone who's positive and undetectable. Exactly, exactly, and that is what. That is what I love about when the CDC released that people that are HIV positive but undetectable cannot transmit the disease. Because I'm like, you want to know what? Oh, girl, do you want the tea on that one? Yes. This is why I love reading studies. Okay, I sound like a total dork. But there's drama. Like, there's drama in the writing if you read these studies. Okay, so this, these actually, this study was actually done in England, in the United Kingdom. And check this out. So 
out of all the people, right? So they had this 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 coordinate couples, one positive, one negative, having unprotected sex, no prep, but the the positive person was undetectable. Out of a hundred percent of all of the people that were in the study, only four people became positive. That's where the drama is. How did these people become positive? So check this out. When they actually genotyped and found out the genetic strain of the virus that these four people became positive with, it wasn't their partner. Maureen's decided you are not the father. I'm telling you, these studies have drama built into them. It's oh, you know how many times during our shows that you make my jaw drop? <laughs> oh. like, all right, let's read some comments. So that, it wasn't from their partner. So they, they, were, so they were cheating the house. They got it from outside their relationship. Cheater, cheater. It probably is someone who thought that they were HIV negative to begin with. See, that's how come if you're gonna have an open relationship, well, you need to make sure that you have communication. And if you do step out, you need to have communication. About Girl, before you get communication, get prep. It is so easy and it's 99.7%. Uh, I mean, you can't but, even, but even still, you need to make sure that you go ahead and you uh, still talk about it because there's other things that, you know, like we said earlier, like John Porco's herpes, you know. So David Eden says your mother, actually my mother's dead. She's sitting in an urn over there. Um, London Dumore says from where laugh out loud, Mississippi, honey. Joshua Collins says the drama, right, honey? Right? Mm -hmm. uh, Natalie Carter says th that is the tea, and Ken Terrell says mic drop. That's, that's the girl, honey. Oh, it's so true. It's so true. You're more likely to get HIV from someone who thinks that they're HIV negative. Prep <laughs> is the best way to protect yourself. And so, and pep really should be thought of as like the morning after pill for each other. Morning after pill, gotcha. gotcha. Totally. And so I love that there's treatment for protection mm -hmm. or preventative prevention. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Protective and treatment. Every step of the way, there's always something. So there's no excuse. No, no, no excuse. It could be. Yeah. Hold on a second. I have something. So listen. Oh. Let's go a little old school. These still exist. What are those? Girl, how long have you been with Dan? <laughs> Never, I don't know what those are. Those are condoms. They make great balloon animals. Yes. They're so good at, They're good at children's parties. So, yeah. Uh, condoms are still a viable option. They're effective 86% if used correctly. So it goes to show the safer sex today is actually prep, not condoms. Huh. Because yeah, so they, said, they, said, they said prep well, before before the whole so so here's so here's some more dish. Bitch, see she gets cocktails at her and she just starts fucking oh, this is really strong. I need to get some more orange juice. Can you pass me the orange juice? Do you mind? I'll say that you don't have herpes. I love that you took oh, our wow. B all about the D episode seriously and are now drinking orange juice. Oh, I love orange juice. Hi, Tony Myers. Hi, Hello, Tony. Ken Perel again saying prevention is treatment. Horace Adonis says his bathroom. I don't know what he's talking about in his bathroom. I don't know if he's talking about HIV or herpes or condoms or everything. I don't know. It could be an invitation. Well, but the orange juice is gone. She only drinks simply orange because she's that girl. But um, hi, Kyle. What are hello? How are you? So here, so here's some more tea. So years ago, again, I was single. I went to uh, a certain bear event that is held in Texas, and I hooked up with this dude, and he wanted to have unprotected sex with me. And I said, absolutely, don't drink that. It's bad. I opened it, bitch, and it smelled like fucking. I died. It smelled oh. like it smelled like when I was in the bathroom earlier. <laughs> but um, he wanted to have um, unprotected sex with me. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. And he was like, well, am I prep? And I was like, well, what is prep? Because it was like kind of like when I first had like kind of gotten into like mainstream-ish. Mm -hmm. And he was like, it's basically a condom for the inside of your body. And I was like, I still don't trust it. 
But now I do because I did my research because knowledge is power. It is. Of course, and I said, I said, this is the tea I logged in for, from cleaning his bathroom. Oh. Because <laughs> she's a clean tea. Oh, so, um, on to the next subject. On yep. to the next subject. This is an important one. I, okay, so I'm, I'm just going to be 100% honest here. We all, transgender care is so critical to all of us in different ways. Um, I don't know, Baronsi, do you want to share your personal experience here with your transition? Well, I I am still uh, identify as male, and I am male, so I've never transitioned. Um, Are you sure so, about that? You know, I am full on woman, honey, okay? I am full on woman, but no. So here, so here is my um, my experience with the uh, trans community. <clears throat> I'm I'm not gonna lie, I didn't understand it six years ago. I didn't understand it four years ago. Well, five years ago, honestly. Like I didn't understand. I was like, well, I don't get it. Like I mean, like I, okay. I mean, I get it. Like I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I didn't understand the severity of it in the sense of why it is this, why it is so important. So can I relate to you in a moment right now? Absolutely. So I also, me also did not get it. Right. I had, in fact, one of the things I, I, I looked to our CEO, Ethan, and I told him flat out, look, these people are coming and knocking on our door. They need help. Right, they need treatment. Other people, other organizations, even endocrinologists, right, who should be the most capable people to handle these patients, mm -hmm. don't and don't do it well and don't understand. Correct. So it's like, can we do what they should be doing, if not do it better? Right. At least do what they should be doing, if not better. Correct. So that's where we basically said, let's do this. So where can we get the best education possible to make this happen? We literally actually were educated by Harvard University's medical school um, on trans care in connection with the Fenway Institute. Fenway Institute, for those people who don't know, is actually one of the national leaders in HIV, uh, not HIV, sorry, in trans care today. So it is huge. You, We are probably the most progressive modern trans care provider in all of Florida today. And that is... I mean, this is the sad part. That shouldn't be the case at all, at all. But, but you want to, but, okay, so that shouldn't be the case at all. But here, at the same time, is it takes somebody to start the true the, the, the ball rolling. That is so true. Yeah, it definitely takes. Yeah, and and, th and this is why. And, and so so to complete my story in the sense of how I why I say I didn't get it and I didn't understand was. Um, you know, when I was working at a certain complex, I was performing with a, a few transgender people and they educated me. They educated me. And that is how come it is so important today to be educated in more than what is just in front of your face and to go beyond and get the personal experience. But think um, about it from their point of view though, like imagine they go to the healthcare provider looking for help and resources and they are now educating their healthcare provider on the fundamental aspects of who they are. Exactly. Exactly. That, that means that they're teaching the provider, not that the provider is helping them. Well, and here's the thing is about three years ago, three, four, four years ago, I found out that I, my cousin has transitioned from female to male and I am so proud of him. And when I saw him, and I and I grew up with him, like well, well, he grew up as, with me uh, before his transition, um, and I could always see a, a sense of uh, of anger on on his face before he transitioned, and I could always yeah. sense a, a sense of um, not knowing how to react. And when I saw him last year, I think it was last year, yeah, last year, with his father and his uh, stepmother. And the sense of joy that was on his face. Yeah, because you're your most authentic self. Oh, right? and like I was like, 
I see you now. I see you now, you know? And that is how come it is extremely important for us to be educated and not just in the LGBTQ plus community, but also in race and also in women's rights. And also in, you know, the, all of these things that everybody is fighting for. For us to get as much as, I'm not saying that we all have to sit here and go to Harvard University like you Well, did, yeah, we did. Have some <laughs> but, uh, okay, so check this out. Here is the interesting part, is that trans care has always existed and the information has always been around. It is, there are nuance and there's a, a trans nuance to a lot of things. Right. However, you and I actually have something in common that we benefit with um, your cousin, actually. Okay. Would you like me to share? I have to have your permission to share this. Wait, repeat the question. She's a little tipsy. Oh, you and I, you and I share something in common with your cousin that who transitioned from to manhood. You have to have my permission. Sure, go for it. I don't okay. care. Okay, I want to make sure I have your permission. <laughs> for people who don't know, Crew Health and and Beyonce like to have consent. Consent is sexy. Consent, consent is extremely important. Yes. Extremely, in everything. Low T, oh look, Natalie got it. Yes, good job, oh, Natalie. Oh, Natalie, come on, come on. Yeah, oh, I will be the first to say, I didn't realize that's what you were gonna talk about. Yeah, I had extremely low to stuff. Well, Natalie obviously got it, she knows. Come on, come on, Natalie. Come on, Natalie. Come Low on, Natalie. Yep. And you wanna know what? You wanna know what? I am going to I am going to jump ahead really quick because of the simple fact that Natalie went ahead and jumped in and said that. And that deserved a fan clack. Okay. Ooh. Natalie, we are going to have from Fat Marker Clothing, you are going to get this stunning, sickening clack fan. Yes, mama, the obsidian. Clack fan, look at this. Absolutely. Okay. This is just one of the um, merchandise that you can purchase on fatmarkerclothing.com. But Marker, you were stunning and you you just popped in with a answer. You win this. You win this obsidian fan from fatmarkerclothing.com. So Natalie, if you could do me a favor, if you could message me your information, your uh, mailing address, and what I'm going to do is I will then forward that over to Fat Marker Clothing, and they're going to get that fan out to you. Yay, Natalie, look at you. Come on, education. She is educated. Yeah. That's awesome. Yes. Yolanda Marchbanks. Campbell is up in the house. Hello, Stephen Powers. Hello. Yes, hello, Michael Thomas. Timothy Stuckey, Tony Holstein, hello, hello, hello. Alan Alder, hello, 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 hello. All right, so yeah, so let's talk about this low testosterone. Yeah, so low testosterone. Low testosterone can affect a lot of us. Our sense of wellness, our attention span, um, our ability to function correctly, our sex drives, erectile dysfunction. It kind of all comes together in this one package that is low testosterone. So think about it, if you are a trans man, in other words, you were born a woman, or a cisgendered woman, and you are actually a trans man, it lower, lower the T than that doesn't, you don't get lower T than that, right? right. So right. that requires treatment to fix, right? Like in the same way that a man with, a cisgendered man with low testosterone would need treatment. And for the record, for all those people that are like, oh, people who do testosterone are on steroids and blah, blah, blah. I don't look like I'm on steroids, honey. Look, she is, she is full figured. She is full figured. Look, I don't have my tits in. These are just saying. Okay. <laughs> just saying. So this is, this is the one thing that I will, this is, this is the one thing that I will say about, um, Testosterone. Here's the negative. I want to have sex all the time. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I know you want to have sex. Like I listen. Dan went back to his house yesterday 
which I cried all night. Like it was like, I cried all night because of you. Like I blew up a blow up doll. I put his drop trap that I stole from him so I could sniff it before I go to bed. I put it on the blow up doll. I stuck it up to it again. And then like I busted another nut because I was just so horny because like I wanted, I wanted him here and I got to think about him. Like uh, the testosterone, I'm 41 years old. And I will tell you, about four years ago or three years ago, I noticed that my libido started to change a little bit. And then two years ago, I was like, what is wrong with me? So this all goes full circle to transgender care, right? In that people come to us, right? And it, and it all comes together with trans care. So last year, the CDC released um, their study that trans people were actually most at risk for start having new cases of HIV. So there's a big confluence of things that happen with trans people. Check this out. It is just like the perfect storm. They do not think that they're at risk at the same level or degree as their other LGBT partners. So in other words, as they think that as a gay man, I would be more at risk, or as a lesbian, or she would be more at risk right. than a trans person. So when you don't think that you're at risk, it's like, oh, I'm not going to crash my car, so I don't have to wear a seatbelt. Well, no, you have to wear your seatbelt because – you don't need to not crash your car to get into a car accident, right? Car accidents can happen regardless. So you have to wear your seatbelt. Then to add it to it, I'm, we're now going to give you testosterone at levels your body has never had before, right? Right. You're finally going to get that thing that your body was looking for. So your everything is going to just kick into gear like, like nothing, like never before. So. Everything comes together, and this is where PrEP is so important, because whether it's intimate sexual partner violence or um, your vulnerability risk, lapse in judgment, the testosterone, perfect storm. And this is why we always, 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 especially in the beginning until you get a better understanding of how testosterone is going to be in your body as a trans person, start with PrEP. Start with PrEP. Let's be safe. And once we know how things are going to be, that we can start the roll, the ball, the roll. We'll figure things out from there. Yeah. So, can I ask you a question about testosterone, really quick? So, sure. so legit. Again, we're gonna go back probably about. Some, oh, she's getting, she's getting warm. She's getting warm up in here again. Huh. This Tito's and the hot flashes. That's a whole other gender oh, issue. Bro. She last time she ate was at one o'clock. Okay, and I've and I've had I think three of these and I finished it out. Anyways, so. I used to be able to basically like shoot and like shoot my eye out. Like it used to be like, right? But as I've gotten older, I'm lucky if I can gush up to my belly button. So I thought my testosterone was gonna be able to get me back to my Christmas story realness, and it hasn't. It, Is that just awesome. like because I've gotten older, my muscles have worn down, or what? No, not because your muscles have worn down. So before yeah. your, your testicles, yeah, you are fat, but that's a different story. Um, <laughs> oh my god, you never take off the <laughs> You call me fat. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Oh, okay, so so this is what happens. Uh, there's a small degree of atrophy that happens because the organ in your body that's supposed to produce testosterone is your testicles and it no longer has to do that function because it's being done for like we're doing it for it. We're giving your body what it needs since it can't do it sufficiently. So there is a little bit of atrophy that does happen. Now, atrophy is different than what people call ball shrinkage. Okay. These are two different things. Let's not get crazy. Hello, Yolanda said, pretty hot and tempting. Yes, know, right? Daniel said, gush, gush. Was that a reveal? Yes, it was a reveal. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. So now he's giving us some skull and crossbones yeah, around here. Yeah. Never call a lady fat, Eric. Exactly. Thank you, Thomas. She said I was fat. <laughs> I'm just heard. being honest. All right. This bitch. She said I was fat. Oh, oh my God. Ah. Ah. But no, honestly, it's totally fine because I call her all kinds of names when we're not on the show. So it's fine. She's getting me back. So tell me this. Where can we find you guys? First off, we can find you guys in this stunning building. Yes. Okay. So would you like to hear a little story about this building? 
I do. Uh, Here's a story of a lovely lady. There is a story of a lovely lady. So this building was actually, the building that we're in right now is actually called the Happy Building. It was built by the Walt Disney World Company for their Imagineers to do any creative projects. Um, when you come into our building, you'll actually notice that there is a massive like center space, right? And that's where Imagineers used to construct things for Disney World and do prototypes. Is that that, glass, is that that glass box thing? Yeah, all that space there used to for them to do construction. That when we did the photo shoot, I basically took over. Yes. Yeah. So our building was originally built by the Walt Disney World Company. Actually, and down the road from us is actually, um, what is it? Universal Studios Creative. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So we are the happy building. You're the happy building. We're the happy place on Earth. Well, not currently because they're still closed. No. Uh, no, not you. I'm talking about Disney. Oh yeah, no. Let me keep that. <laughs> so let's le let's read a couple comments. Uh, Natalie says, "Da Vinci realness." I have no clue what that means, but okay, I'm there for it, Natalie. If you want to say that, like I'm like the Mona Lisa, okay, yes. So Yolanda gets it. We're just honest people. Yolanda says medical professionals are always honest. So listen, Yolanda is a P is a PTA. Ooh. So let, here's a story of me and Yolanda. Yolanda and I have known each other. What is this? 2020. We met in 2000, so or 2000 or 2001. So we've known each other 19, 20 years. She oh, wow. is literally like the sister of another Mister's Mister's sister that is my sister. Because, like, I mean, obviously she is a deaf. A, like, I am pasty white, and she is ebony goddess realness. She is pecan brown, honey. And but so she is, but she's like a sister. She's family. She's there, like literally, like she's her birthday is the day after mine, but she's one year older. Just spilling some tea. Forty two on forty one. Uh, so yeah. she's April six. I'm April fifth. And so I mean, like literally, like the amount of similarities that we have are so funny because, like, the other day when I was painting my room last week or two weeks ago. And I went live. She messaged, she calls me and she's like, I fucking hate you. And I'm like, why? She's like, bitch, I'm literally about to start painting my porch. <laughs> she's oh. like, we will show up to the same place, basically wearing the same outfit, like like a white top, black jeans, white black shirt, <laughs> white jeans. You know, that type of like literally show up. Show up. So yeah, I, I love I love me some Yolanda. I, so, I, about Horace on a different topic. Horace wrote an interesting comment here. He's like, "What about people in a relationship that have a sexual partner and have zero sex drive and zero interest in fixing it? Leave them." So here's the thing: love them. people decide this all the time, right? Um, and this is a discussion, uh, an unfortunate discussion that I have to have with patients all the time. So, for example, in psychology, a lot of the medications in psychology have, I wouldn't say impotence, it has an anti-sex drive component, right? Not the newer medications, so we're moving away from that and that's changing, but a lot of the current medications we have in psychology, for example, they, they because remember, they're mood stabilizing. So if the medication doesn't know that you're going happy, it just means, no, 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 come down, come down, we want to control the mood and keep it right here. So people then have to decide, do I take this medication that's going to help with my depression or my anxiety, right? Or do I have to live with crushing depression and anxiety to have a sex drive to meet my partner's needs? Mm -hmm. uh, the same is also true with people with seizures, right? Uh, Keppra, Depakote, these medications also have that situation. So they have to decide, do I prevent or reduce my risk for seizures? or have sex with my partner. And that's where having sex with my partner kind of takes a backseat. However, this is the interesting I tell people, the interesting part I tell people. Sexual contact doesn't necessarily mean penetration, right? At all. Correct. Absolutely. So you can you can build a house with a hammer, you can build an orgasm with a dildo. Listen, I if my ex would have at least given me a blow drive within four years, we'd probably still be together. Shut just saying. Up. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, Mrs. Beyonce, do we have anything that we need to give away? We have, we have. So, this is not the mask that you're going to be receiving. You will be receiving a mask from 
this lovely, handsome fella. Glorious, a high quality, adjustable, washable, breathable, protective mask. You will also be supporting a, a local business, but um, he is a fantastic person. His sewing skills are fantastic. The first show you saw that I wore the bear paws and the bear ears and the little bear bow tie and stuff like that. Those were made by him. Um, on Facebook, you can find him as of Horace Adonis. On Instagram, you can find him at, at a pup named Horace. So a underscore pup underscore named underscore Horace. God, that's a damn long name. I know. So, this is the type of mask you will be receiving. It is a cloth mask. This is mine, so you won't be receiving this one. This is where I have mad respect for Horace. He actually did the research from the CDC to find out how many layers of cloth needed to filter are in the mask, right? It's not just some flimsy. Oh, no problem. So, so here, um, this, so we, the, at Crew Health, our masks are actually made by Horace, oh. right? So our reusable, washable masks are made by Horace. Um, it's kind of like, it has a band. I don't know if you can see it there. Yep. So it goes behind the neck, and then you want to pinch the nose, and then make sure you tug down so you get as maximum coverage as possible. So right. pull, pinch, and tug. Mm -hmm. And like then strap. Pinch. And you want to go up, let me see, up at an angle like this, uh -huh. right? Because you want to make sure that this stays as high as above so it doesn't lag down. This is the one thing I hate about people when I go out in public. I see them doing this. So <laughs> everything you say in your mouth is sitting on the outside of your nose. Okay. Yeah. What is this nonsense? Right, 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 right. Right. Mm -hmm. Crazy. So that mask you are going to receive from Horace Adonis free. He is going to ship that to you. He's going to make whatever color you want that he has in stock. So you have to answer three questions. So about five, I don't know, about three minutes ago, I reflashed to see if anybody was paying attention. Four of the services that we talked about that Crew Health offers. So the first person, the first person that can message in the um, comments, four, or I'm sorry, three of the four services that we mentioned that you offer of preventative, mm -hmm. protective, definitely treatment, treatment, and both of both the last two are treatment, really. So basically, yeah. the first person that can message, I'm looking right here on here. I'm looking to see the first person that can type out three of the four services that Crew Health offers. You will be receiving a free mask shipped to you by Horace Adonis. I will get your information. He will reach out to you to find out what color fabric you want. So again, this is supporting a local business. This is also, you are getting a high quality durable. It's double layered. And I think there's like something in there actually. No, that's like, it's triple layered. Oh, it's triple layered. Yeah, because the hospital quality ones actually have um, four layers. So this is the closest you're going to get handmade to without having difficulty breathing. So the whore that lives with me. Oh, my God. Damn. The whore that lives with me answered first. Damn. Give me my mask, horse. Okay. okay. I have an idea. I don't want to give it to John Porco. Can I say that? <laughs> what the fuck? Can I say that? I will give John Porco a crew health mask when he comes into the office to keep. If we get someone else other than John Porco. Yes. Go ahead. No, give someone else. It's fine. So we have one. We need one other person. So basically, just look up and, and the first person to type what John Porco said will be the winner. <laughs> basically, we retype John Porco's response. <laughs> two layers of fabric and one layer of fleece. Yes. Um, so yeah. we basically need the first person to type out what John Porco said, and you will be the winner of a fantastic mask by Horace Adonis right here in Orlando. He's a cutie patootie. If you follow him on TikTok, you'll see all of his slut whore pictures. Yeah, I didn't know he was on TikTok. Yeah. I gotta watch that. All right. First person. We're waiting. Okay. Carisha Jones. Tyresha Jones, honey. Yes. Hi, Glenn. Prep STD Trans Health. Tyresha Jones. 
if you will please send me a message saying, just say Horace Adonis Mask, uh, DM me, and I will get you in contact with Horace, and we will uh, get you that mask on, on over. So uh, the last question, I do not want you guys to answer this in here, but the first message that I see through my messenger, and there will have a timestamp on there, <laughs> excuse me, so the first person that, and whether you're on Eric's page or my page and we're not friends, so the first person on my end and the first person on Eric's end, um, right? Is it my end and your end? Your end, your end first. My end. Ladies first, come on. So the first person on my end to message me um, the answer to this question, um, we are going to be able to hook you up with Eric and he does do teleservices. Um, Actually, you know our office is open full time. Oh, and your office is open full time. Yeah. We'll talk about if you're not here in Orlando. Medicine is an essential um, service, yeah. Medical is a completely essential service. So you're fully open, you've yeah. been open, you've been on the front lines, we'd love this. Um, but the person that is able to message me first, the answer to this question that I'm going to say, and I will be looking at timestamps, I will have Eric reach out to you and he will set up a consultation. However, either you coming in the office or teleservices, whatever, however, which way you guys need to do to get on prep. Again, I don't want you to answer it here because your uh, status is confidential. That's right. That's right. Um, so, you know, I am held to the standards of them because I'm with him right now, so I cannot even say anything. Uh, so the first person that is able to answer this is... And this is really only if you were in here in the beginning, you're going to know this answer. So let's, I'm curious to see the question because I don't know the question myself. So let's find out. I'm going to flash it for three seconds. One, two, oh. three. What is that man's name? And what is he into the company? Ooh. So I flashed it for three seconds. So if you're smart, after this ends, you will rewind it and take a look. Message me and I will get you in contact with Eric Suarez of crewhealth.org. I'm curious, hold on a second. How much money is it in prep? Hold on a second. Seven uh, months worth of prep. That is worth $10,500. In just medication alone. Ken Terrell, you cannot answer because you are part of the Crew Health organization. <laughs> or, yeah, you're part of the Crew Health family, come on. <laughs> exactly. So. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Any questions for myself or Eric? Um, I love questions. Let's do um, Let's do some drag questions and some. Uh, okay, so we're, no, we're not here for an hour and 15, so we're gonna stay for 15 more minutes. Yes. Let's do some questions until, because there's a 30 second delay. So we're gonna wait for them to come through. Let's do drag questions for five and then crew health for five. Gotcha. If you guys could share love, heart, all of this, it, this would be fantastic. Um, Eric, I want you to ask me a question. Okay, I think I've asked this before, so please do forgive me. Uh -huh. uh, face paint, I, I, I can't wrap my mind around it. What is it that you can't wrap your mind about it? So when I watch RuPaul's Drag Race, and I understand this is kind of made for TV, right? So. It's like, <clears throat> especially I think one of the last episodes, they were like all yellow. They were making up their their drag daughter. You have, you have to think of the color wheel. So first, you have to know about your lighting. Okay. okay. So if I turn down, can you um actually turn this light off right in front of me so I can show an example? So right now you see me looking like this, right? And I'm going to take off my glasses, even though my eye is all wonky and fucked up, so you can see what I'm talking about. Like so she's still been watering. Okay. This is. Mm -hmm. So you see that it's at the bottom underneath the light. See there's two knobs. She's all I help her out. So okay, actually keep it right there. So see this is this is yellow. Now yeah. go to cool. So that's warm. Now go to so that's severe warm. Now go to cool. Keep going. So see how my face oh, is. Oh yeah. That so, is bizarre. So you have to know about what a your lighting you're gonna be upon. The one light that you never put on a drag queen is a red light because a red light will wash everything away. They they will watch God. 
completely gone because a red light actually covers any type of imperfection. And that is how come in the red light district in Amsterdam, they have the red lights. It's not a symbolism of, of prostitution or a uh, person of uh, sexual services. It is actually to cover any type of imperfection that that person has. Um, so you never use red. Um, but when you are doing your paint, you have to think about what you're looking at. So like, I knew I was gonna wear this outfit. So I went with, pinks and purples and, you know, stuff like that. Now my eye is watering, so I couldn't even go heavier on that. Like I have to do a photo shoot after this, so this could be fun. But, uh, you know, I had to take that into, into uh, aspect. Um, Natalie says red or pink. Yes, you never put a red or a pink light on, a, on an entertainer because it just washes the them out. When you are painting your face, you dark conceals, white um, reveals, basically. So you want to take away any type of feature and you want to highlight a feature you want to see. So like my nose. So I have this, you know, brown. Oh, look at that. Brown. Because if I take this off, I mean, granted, you could tell that I have, you know, a fuller nose. But if you just look at it, you see this white and your eye automatically goes to there. That's why if you're ever looking at a picture, um, so that's why the clowns have a red nose to attract the eye there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's correct. Yes, yes, <laughs> it is. It is. They go right to the nose. But no, like white, if you look at a picture, anything that is white, your eye automatically goes there first. So your <laughs> eye naturally sees what is highlighted first. Um, Did I do a good job at that one? Black, black liquid might not be good. No, it's not that it's not good. I hit my water line. I like literally like I was getting ready. I like I hit it like poked my eye type of thing. So I probably had a pink eye. But yeah. Um, so now he said shadows and highlight. Exactly. So basically like you know, think about it like think about it as as you're out of your weight loss journey. Like when you you're now 280 something and you were 308 when you were 308. Oh, it was not a good weight loss journey. Well, but still, I mean stress is still a weight loss journey. Um, it was anxiety. It was anxiety and stress. But think about it, when you were 308, you probably wore darker clothes. Yeah. And you're losing weight. Look, it's and you're, and you're coming into spring clothing, which is, still has darker hues, but they're a little bit brighter. And that's because you're a little bit like, oh, look at me. You know? So, yeah. So, all right. Next question. All right. Um, let's do some health questions. Do you ask me a health question? Ask you a health question. So... You mentioned this earlier, but you didn't give me a full answer. Since oh. I have started my testosterone, I've noticed my nut sack has gotten smaller. Why is that? Atrophy. From the testosterone? Yeah. Um, there's, I mean, that happens naturally. So two things happen naturally with age. Obviously, gravity drags, right? But then also in people who are have low T and are on treatment, actually, um, uh, what do you call this? The testicles themselves don't have to produce testosterone, so they kind of reduce because, and but they reduce. I mean, the reduction in, t in testicular size is uh, really minimal. It's so like have Dave tug on them and tap them on it. Will it wake them up and make them work so they get a little bit bigger again? No, but there is a way of waking them up. So this is an interesting topic because um, I have this conversation with trans people all the time. Okay. Um, one of the things that we talk about all the time was like, okay, well, um, our, like the legal paperwork for trans care, right, for informed consent means that, um, yeah, uh, Natalie's correct again. Natalie's correct. She is just coming up in here with you know, some testicles. Black light, sure. shadows and highlight. Your testicles don't have to work as hard. Correct. A PhD, MD, something, something, something everywhere. Yes. Brad, yes. So that's exactly where I'm going to, a jump start. So um, we use the human gonadotropic hormone, HCG, right? And um, you can actually do that for about four weeks, and it actually can jump start your reproductive system. In trans care, we do this when it's like, let's say your cousin, for example, your cousin says, okay, well, I want to have children and I want to carry them, right? Well, it's a little bizarre, of course, for men to carry their own children, but trans men can actually do that. Bizarre so, from, the, from the outside world that's not educated about it. Exactly, right. exactly. Um, 
So in this particular case, I was like, you know, I, I jokingly tell patients all the time. It's like anyone who has Instagram, anyone who's ever seen the Ellen DeGeneres show, you've seen trans men have children. Like this yeah. is not an uncommon story now. Right. And this is exactly how it's done with a jump start. You use HCG, you jump start your female, re your original cisgendered um, reproductive organs and use it for its intended purpose. And then once you have your babies, you shut that down and you go back to the treatment. Well, that's, uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. I love that. I love that. So so we have a question from our uh, live studio audience over here. Ooh, we have a live studio audience. Sure. What is your name? No. He said, is there any um, type of risk for the children, for the, the for the for the babies that are being start. carried because of the jump start? No. 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 Is it? Guess guess what hormone is used to detect to to see if you were pregnant to begin with? Testosterone. HCG. HCG. It's the same hormone. Ah. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Wow, this is good. Yeah, and I love these. I love our shows because I learn. Like, honestly, I learn. So, like, and, you know, we're teaching people. This is fantastic. I love this. So, Natalie says, girl, I'm old. I know things. <laughs> old means you do know things. That's for sure. All right, Eric. So, we are at an hour and 21 minutes. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. I'm hungry. I need to stop drinking. I need to do a photo shoot in a hot minute. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, are we do no, let's save those for next week. Oh, I thought we were gonna wrap it up. No, we wrapped up we <laughs> she, <laughs> to say, she, she called me old and now she's saying we're gonna wrap it up with condoms. She got jokes oh, today. Fat, yeah. Got, oh yeah, she called me fat, not old. She must have gotten laid last night. Oh first I time in a long time. Know. I see her with a smile. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I would like to thank everybody that has joined us. Please make sure that you tune in next Monday, the 7th, 11th, May 11th, mm -hmm. uh, at 7 p.m., same time, same place, right here on Facebook. Um, we will be streaming again with Sass and Science, with myself, Bear mm -hmm. Bear, and Eric, mm -hmm. the APRN of CrewHealth.org. Do not forget that if you are looking for a healthcare provider that actually cares for you, because there are a lot of people out there that brand themselves and rebrand themselves and rebrand themselves and rebrand themselves. It's kind of like Walmart. You have Walmart, and then you go into like the Walmart Super Center, and then you go into like the Walmart like Whole Foods grocery store that they have now. It's all still Walmart. I I particularly am a Target experience because Target is the same thing every single time. I've never seen a change at Target, just like I've never seen a change at crewhealth.org. So make sure you hit up crewhealth.org for all of your medical needs. You can get any type of service that you need, especially if you're looking for an HIV prevention, treatment, or protection, or if you are a transgendered person that is looking for somebody that actually understands they are Harvard certified in trans care. So you want to make sure that you are putting your health and your journey into people that actually have the correct education. So thank you again. I am Beyonce Bear, the sass of? I am sass, sass of sass and science. I am Eric Suarez, the nurse practitioner of sass and science. And thank you again for joining us. Again, check out crewhealth.org. Also, if the first person that messaged me into whatever question I asked a hot minute ago, whoever that hottie, hottie that I put up on the screen was, of who they are, you will be in, uh, I will get in your information. And I am also signed to disclosure. I cannot disclose any information that you give me except to Eric. Congratulations on your prep. Yes. And I would like to say thank you so much for Natalie for answering that question earlier, just giving us some info really out there. You will be getting that fan. Make sure you send me your information. Um, who won Who won the mask? Not me. Who won the mask? No, someone won the mask. Yeah, somebody won the mask. Hold on. John, you're going to get your Tyresha, mask. Tyresha Jones. Tyresha Jones, congratulations to you. Make sure you message me as well. Just say Horace Adonis mask, and I will make sure that I will get Horace your information. We would like to thank fatmarker.fatmarkerclothing.com uh, fat for donating the fan. And we would also like to thank Horace Adonis for donating the mask. Keep safe. 
wash your hands. Remember, keep social distancing. If you're going out for essentials, make sure it is truly essential. And if you're going out to hook up, think about your choices. <laughs> Again, Beyonce Bear, and this is Eric Suarez. This is Sass and Science, and we bid you a good night until next Monday at 7 p.m. Bye. Bye. Bye.